weekend, folks. It's nice having you each and every week. I am Keegs. I'm your host as we have some conversations with Hope City, the new church plant helping persons to find their hope in Christ regardless of what they face. Come as you are, no perfect people allowed. As always, I'm here with Pastor Jay of Hope City and we continue this week developing on the topic that we had last week. And last week we spoke about faith. All right. Um, the main point where we started the conversation on faith was Pastor Jay reflecting on the three Hebrew boys who were in the fire, right? And as much as in today's world and we have our own situations and we have our own feelings of despair, I'm still expected to have faith. Not forget that these things are around, but still have your faith in God. So this week, as we develop on the point, it wouldn't be fair of us to just tell you, well, have faith. And just leave you there with that. <laughs> All right? That is not what it's about. So Pastor Jay is going to come this week and start a guide you along the way, especially now with one of the key, the key ingredients in you having that faith and furthering that faith in God. So over to you, Pastor Jay. Yeah, Keith, thanks as always. Good to have these conversations with you, sir. Um, let's like Keith said, you know, um, the idea today is really... Not just telling you have faith, but really giving you, I think, one of the keys to the Christian faith in how do we guard or keep that faith in the midst, especially in the midst of trials. So right now we know everyone is going through difficult times with this COVID-19. Yeah, we're happy. Things starting to reopen. People yeah, getting yeah. opportunities. So we're grateful. We're grateful for that. But we know there's still challenges. We know businesses have been hit hard. So even though yeah. some might be reopening, you know, they have the challenges of so much lost time, etc. So we know there are difficult times right now. Um, the idea with the three Hebrew boys, um, like Keith talked about, was really they ha- they were given a choice, either worship a-, a false god or be thrown into a fiery furnace. And what we saw last week was that they were able to stand up and be strong in their faith. And they stood up against... Um, the threat of their lives ending to still make the right choice. So that had me thinking, you know, could I do the same? You know, I I, I think all of us as, as believers, we want to believe that we God first. You know, people say that we put God first, but I honestly don't even know if my life is threatened, how I would respond, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to believe that, you know, I would stand firm, right? But... <laughs> <laughs> the, the truth is, if I'm being fully honest, I don't know, you know? Yeah, never know, yeah, yeah never know you respond in that one moment. Yeah. But, so, so what But what I looked at, I think is is one of the keys to how I know we might be able to stand strong. Um, I'll just share a little story to, to introduce the, the idea. You know, when we were growing up, this was, the, um, I have two brothers, an older one and a younger one. Okay. Um, and the older one, before he got his license, um, so... He decided to borrow my dad's car without my dad knowing. So obviously, he and his best friend, um, and I was the third wheel moving along. No opposition, we love it, taking a little joy, right? Long story short, we ended up um we ended up much further than we said we were going. <laughs> right? Uh, we 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 um went on to the main road, crossed the bus route, real mm. real thing. So no, no just on back roads. Anyway, um, Went to check a, a, a friend of ours um, that, that was in the area, but much further away. And coming back, my brother took a corner, skated on some gravel. We ran mm. into a culvert, <laughs> broadside the, the driver's side of the vehicle. So we crazy, scared right now. Before yeah. we head back home, the three of us um, made a plan. Because we know if we tell my father where we went, that is it, we trouble. We probably yeah. wouldn't see to get our license again, right? And so we made up this story. We and we all three of us just stuck to the story. We said, like, okay, this is where we'll show him. This is where this is where we'll see where it is, whatever. Anyway, I never would have think that we would, you know, lie to my dad or or, or stand up to him in that way to, to deceive him. But what I realized was we had strength in each other because we all was facing that fire <laughs> then. <laughs> right? So, we... <laughs> okay, exactly like our own stories, you know. But anyway, <laughs> the the thing about it was my dad found out the truth the next day. Um, <laughs> being a pastor's kid, you know, 
somebody out of the genuineness of their heart said uh, they called him and said hey are your boys okay i saw they went a little accident and so with that he just followed the conversation and they told him exactly where it was what time it happened everything the next day my dad moved real, real slick real slick yeah. <laughs> when he found out the truth we were he, he came he picked up each one of us and took us to, to let us show him where, the, where, where our story was he yeah. already knew the truth but he a little while after, you know, when the situation settled, he said he was proud of us that we, you know, we stuck together, you know, the loyalty, you know, <laughs> he, he, he appreciated that much. He didn't appreciate the lies, yeah, uh, but yeah. he appreciated the loyalty because he said oh, each, and he picked up each one of us, you know, my older brother, uh, his best friend, and then me separately, and we didn't get chance to talk. It was one after the next. Um, but here's the point: like, I wouldn't do that under normal circumstances, you know, to, to do that with my dad. And I think it was because we had supported with each other. So take yeah. it back to the story. Um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, I believe that the, the power that they had to stand strong in their faith, I believe that came from the power of the community in the three mm -hmm. of them. You know, that it wasn't just one person saying, hey, you know, we're not bowing down to this fake God. Kill us if you have to. It was yeah. three of them standing together for the honor of God. And I think yeah. that's where the, the, the power of it is. So in the midst of the COVID, um, if you find your faith buckling or, you know, the temptations coming, whatever, find yourself around people who will stay to the faith. I think that's the power of their kids. The power of yeah. um, I, I always like when we touch on the, the topic of community because I see the value of it so much now. Like even when we talk about the guys looking for a little sweat, you know, um, yeah, the wives and the girlfriends quarreling that you always like when they go by the bar. But um, it's not necessarily that men going for that drink or going for that alcohol. Men really going for that sense of community because right. you're going through something and more than likely, it's they something that the next man going through. Right? Well. So the, the community is definitely something that helps us just as human beings but at the same time as we can see from your story especially there sometimes the community could lead you the wrong way correct <laughs> <laughs> i might enjoy that story a little too much you know kids. yeah yeah so yeah we need the community and the community right. helps us but again the people that we keep around us can either lead us to the positive yeah. or to the negative in the situation um, and and where you touch on there, I think is real critical. I mean, like I would say, growing up, I think we've we've all heard it from somewhere, from some parents, some guardian, um, grandparents, or you know, family or whatever. But we've always heard, um, be careful with the company you keep. Mm -hmm. And just just like you said, it you know, in our in our situation at that time as young kids, um, we we band together, but we band together to do the wrong thing, not to do the right. And, uh, I think even as adults, it's the same. So what I, would, yeah, what, what I would say is to encourage people today, um, for, look and examine the um, relationships in your life and see which ones um, push you towards faith in God. Because that's what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. The situation was bad. They, were, they knew they were going to lose their lives if God didn't show up. But even still, they had faith in God and they had faith yeah. in God with each other. And so, you, same thing you touched on. If there are relationships in your life that you realize pull you off the path that you're supposed to be walking, come on, you got. it's time that you start to separate. And that's probably one of the hardest things sometimes. Um, I, I know that for me, walking this walk of faith has been one of the most difficult things. Um, but let me just show you this piece. I think all scripture is inspired by God and it's not by yeah. chance or coincidence. And you have three boys standing up to a king um, to have faith in God. And here's what an, another part of scripture says. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm just going to read it quickly. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But mm -hmm. woe to him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one, one be warm alone? Verse 12 actually brings it together. Though one may be overpowered by another, 
two can withstand him. And the three-fold cord is not quickly broken. You know, I think that just totally encompasses that story that we've been looking at. That, you know, the power of that community, when you have um, just two good people around you, still in your faith, keeping you on track. And so I really believe that's what helps us to keep our faith even during the testings and through the trials. That, yeah. that for me, I think is the, the key there, kids. Um, now, I know we have a limited time as per usual, but right. while we on the topic of the community and, you know, having the, the persons around that can help us and influence us, influence us in the right directions, just um, touch a little bit on finding the balance between um, having the connections with the persons that affect you positively right. and still, still maintaining the relationships with the ones who may not influence you positively, but you might still want to influence positively. You might want to be a positive influence for them. So, so <laughs> I'll give you an illustration. I, I used to share this with the, with the youths I, when, I, when I used to be in charge with youth group and stuff in our former church. Imagine yourself, kids, standing on top of a chair, right? Mm-hmm. And you have a, a youth, maybe, maybe even weaker than you, but they're standing on the ground. Even you are the stronger person, chances are it is easier for them to pull you off the chair than it is for you to pull them up onto the chair. Okay. So think about it this way. When you ask the question, well, how do we balance it? You have to be really self-aware and be honest to, to recognize there are relationships you may want to help people with, mm. but they bring out some of the bad sides in you. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know the difference. Like, I do believe that part of our growth in faith is to always connect with people higher than us, but also we have to be that strength for somebody else. Yeah. So most definitely, it is not about just cutting people who not, you know, on that level with you or whatever, no. But you have to discern um, if some of those relationships listen how I look at it the people that I want to support are the people at least I know want to reach the same place I'm headed they yeah. may be a few steps behind but I can't keep relationships that need me to change their mind to even head okay. in the direction that I head in it yeah. if you understand the front so it's like we headed on the same path um, so for me it's we trying to become more like Christ. We trying to walk out this faith in this in this world where everything challenging it, our own situation. You might have everything together. You might still be trying to figure out a lot. But as your desire, as your goal, trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll pull you with, with me. I just want to be a few steps ahead of you. I could lend you some wisdom, some guidance. I'll do that. But if it's someone who you know to yourself, you, you had a great relationship with them, but they're not heading the same place with you to keep that faith, then you have to make the, the tough decisions. Yeah. I think it's yeah. really discerning between those relationships like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear so it's really <laughs> to figure out, you know, if it's really or sometimes you could realize that well, it's probably not a one man job and you just need some help from your same community to probably reach out to that person. Correct. But you really need right. to figure out the situation. I would say I would say for before you even start a cut, you, you do everything in your in your power to try and help that person to, to reach yeah. out and, and whatnot. You know, and, and that's that was key what you said. Don't just do it alone because chances are it's easier to always fall back than it is to pull somebody forward. Yeah. Just with momentum. Yeah. So so that I would say yeah. So you touched on something real good there, kids. Uh, well, a short time wise, we should be wrapping up about now. So, anything you want to leave with them before we close up today? Uh, no, I mean, I think we touched everything there, Keys. Um, just, you know, find yourself in the right communities. Get out one, two people that steer you towards faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. And develop and intentionally chase those relationships. All right, nice. So, once again, folks, thanks for viewing. Hope to see you all next week for our next episode of Conversations with Hope City. I am Keys. This was Pastor Jan as we leave you. As always, you see, come as you are, no perfect people alone.